Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks. Well, I'd like to continue explaining more about the city's legislative agenda and another problem, which is that the city of Wichita's legislative agenda regarding the Affordable Airfare Subsidy Program seems to be based on data that is not supported by the facts. Now, the Affordable Airfares Program pays a subsidy to discount airlines to offer service in Wichita. For many years, the airline that received the most subsidy was AirTran. And now that Southwest Airlines has merged with AirTran, and now that Southwest offers service to and from Wichita, it is Southwest Airlines that receives a subsidy. Now the reasoning for the subsidy program is that by having a discount airline in Wichita, other airlines will also offer lower fares. And that's undoubtedly true. We have saved money on airfares by the subsidy program. At issue, though, is how much has been saved. The Wichita legislative agenda states this. Since 2002, Affordable Airfares has provided $1.446 billion in savings for Wichita airport travelers. Now, that's a lot of money, $1.5 billion, and it is certainly exaggerated. Now, we don't really know how much the subsidy as program has saved, as we cannot know what would have happened had there not been the subsidy program. So we have to estimate, and here are two estimates. A study from Dr. Art Hall at the University of Kansas contained this. Combining the estimated aggravating savings for AirTran and Frontier sums to an annual average range of 31 to $39 million. And minutes of a REAP board meeting from a few years ago mentioned $33 million that was saved in 2010. So if we use, say, $35 million as the annual savings, then for the 12 years from 2002 to 2014, these savings add up to $420 million. But the city uses a value that is 3.4 times higher. I think Wichitans might want to ask City Hall, why is there such a large difference? And the city's legislative agenda also mentions a presentation given by William S. Swellbar, an aviation industry analyst, who reported the Wichita airport performance is acknowledged for its unique performance in growth and capacity. But there are several curious aspects of this presentation. Well, here's a slide from the presentation that needs some examination. It's the slide that shows growth in traffic at the Wichita Airport, and it really needs to be interpreted with caution. First, note that the scale of the vertical axis does not start with zero, and that's something that needs to be recognized, because the bars for departures from the airport appear to be rapidly rising. The bar for 2013 looks to be about twice as tall as the bar for 2012. This leads to the impression that whatever it is these bars represent, it has doubled from 2012 to 2013. And that's because bars on a chart traditionally represent a quantity of something starting from zero. Well, when we examine the entire vertical axis of this chart, we see that it does not start with zero. Instead, it starts at the value 12,050, and the entire axis represents a range of 250 passengers per year. Now, this means that the increase in departures from 2012 to 2013, which looks like an impressive jump in Swellbar's chart, a doubling in value, is really just an increase from 12,120 to 12,195. That's a growth in departures of 75 flights per year, which is 0.62%, or about six flights per month. Now that's better than a decline, but not by much. Now, it's not deceptive to start a bar chart from a point other than zero, as long as readers are aware of that and interpret the numbers cautiously and appropriately. But that wasn't made clear in this presentation. So these numbers need to be placed in meaningful context. Otherwise, 
City council members and bureaucrats might jump on this chart and use it as evidence of dramatic changes happening at the Wichita airport, when in reality the change is quite mild. And that's exactly what has happened. And that's why I wanted to take a moment to explain this to you, even though it seems we're way off in the weeds. But there's even more to be concerned about on this chart. What about the increase in departures from 2013 to 2014? Now, this presentation was given in October and would have been based on the data available only through June or July of 2014. But somehow, the presenter was able to tell the audience how many departures the Wichita Airport would experience in all of 2014. Now, I can understand if he had presented an estimate for 2014, but the numbers were not presented as estimates. And there's even more. The data for the years that are complete also appear to be questionable. For departures, Swellbar, Swellbar shows departures rising from 2012 to 2013. But the Bureau of Transportation Statistics shows departures from Wichita as declining for the same period. On another issue related to transportation, the city of Wichita's legislative agenda calls for the pursuit of money to pay for the funding of an environmental study of the proposed passenger rail extension to Oklahoma City. Now, they're not asking for money for an actual rail line just to complete an environmental study. Now, Amtrak, our passenger rail service, is very expensive. And in most parts of the country, it relies on massive taxpayer subsidy. For example, for the line from Fort Worth, Texas to Oklahoma City, and that's the line that is proposed for expansion northwards to Wichita, taxpayers pay a subsidy of $26.76 per passenger for the trip. And that's a pretty short trip. Now, being expensive, Amtrak is usually pitched as an economic development driver. Yes, we taxpayers have to pay for passengers to ride, but once in your town, they spend money there. Never mind that so few people travel on trains outside the Northeast Corridor, so few people that they are barely noticed. In 2012, intercity Amtrak counted for about 6.8 million passenger miles of travel. Commercial air racked up 580 million passenger miles, or 85 times as many. So some people, like Wichita City Council member Pete Meitzner, he represents District 2, that's mostly east of East Wichita, some people then take a different tack. Passenger rail is now all about boosting business productivity. The Wichita Business Journal reported this in 2012, for him, Meitzner, they're referring to, for him and the local business leaders he's spoken with, it's all about productive hours. Meitzner says the people who are interested in regional train travel for business are often people who are currently driving to their destinations instead. They're equipped with smartphones, tablet computers, and other technologies, but they can't use them much or at all while they're driving. Sitting on trains, Meitzner said, business people could get work done. And he suggests the rise of new mobile technology is one reason passenger rail ta travel is on the rise. Well, unfortunately for Meitzner's business case, at about the same time as that article, the New York Times published a piece detailing the extreme frustration Amtrak riders have had with on-train Wi-Fi service, reporting, for rail travelers of the Northeast Corridor, the promise of Wi-Fi has become an infuriating tease. And contemporary news reports report that Amtrak is still planning to upgrade its Wi-Fi systems. And then, when we consider the speed at which government works, well, by the time a passenger rail line could actually be established between Wichita and Oklahoma City, it's quite likely that driverless cars will be a reality. Remember, we've been trying to raise money just for an environmental impact study for many years. Now, with driverless cars, people can be in their car and use their computers for business productivity, 
and they can travel directly to their destination instead of to the train station. Plus, they will be able to, to do this on their own schedule, not on Amtrak's schedule. And that is invaluable, as only one train each day is contemplated. Furthermore, if there really is a business case for travel between Wichita and Oklahoma City, I imagine that some of the entrepreneurs who have built a new industry around intercity bus travel might establish service. These new companies use buses with Wi-Fi, first-class accommodations, and other amenities. Buses are much lower cost than rail, are much more flexible, and most importantly, are operated by private sector entrepreneurs rather than by the government, as is passenger rail. Now, I understand that leaders like Pete Meitzner and others in City Hall, they see federal money being spent elsewhere, and they want that money also spent here. It doesn't really matter to them whether the spending is worthwhile. They just want it spent here. This greed for federal tax dollars contributes to the rising cycle of spending. We end up buying and building a lot of stuff that doesn't really work except for lining the pockets of special interest groups. And in the case of Meitzner's pet project, Passenger Rail, we do this with borrowed money. Now, we can expect this behavior from the progressive members of the Wichita City Council. But conservatives are supposed to stand for something else. So instead of calling for the expansion of Amtrak, perhaps the worst of all federal agencies, the city of Wichita should do taxpayers a favor and call for an end to the government subsidy of Amtrak everywhere across the nation. <laughs>